Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Sunday, November the 26th. And this morning I'd like to talk about LoRa. LoRa is a, a long range protocol designed for um, low power battery operated uh, communication. Here's an example of a Raspberry Pi 4 and I've got a LoRa transceiver mounted on it. Um, if you go to um, the LoRa Alliance, which is reference one, here are some rough specifications. The LoRa protocol works in different bands in North America and Europe and all over the world. In the um, LoRa Alliance reference, it gives you uh, all the specifications for each region and each country. Here's some typical data. There's a 900 megahertz band in North America and Europe, and North America is 902 to 928, whereas in Europe it's, sli Europe it's slightly lower from 863 to 870. We're talking about very low data rates, something between, let's say, 250 bits per second up to, let's say, 22 kilobits per second. And the bandwidth we're talking about, um, wide bandwidths here, we've got uh, 125 kilohertz, 250 kilohertz, and 500 kilohertz. In terms of power, fairly low power, let's say from 2 dBm to uh, up to 28 dBm in North America and 60, 16 dBm EIRP uh, in Europe. Now, there's a thing called the spreading factor. What's interesting about LoRa is it uses um, CHIRP spread spectrum uh, communications, which we're going to talk about in a second. And the spreading factor goes from 7 to 12. So the number of symbols will be 2 to the power of the spreading factor. So for instance, if we have a spreading factor of 7, that means 2 to the 7th or 100, 128 symbols. So each symbol represents 7 bits. So in this, I'm looking at my blog post here. Um, here's the code I'm going to use. I'm quite interested in, in the LoRa, so I'm getting into it now for the first time. So I bought the uh, I bought the transceivers, and I'm going to see how they work. But I thought I would um, try to build the waveforms just to, to get a good idea how the modulation systems work. So let's go over to um, to Psychos, which is my go-to um, mathematical program for building. Um, building waveforms. So basically what we're going to do then is I'm going to have a VCO. We're going to, I'm going to build the code in Psychos Lab and then I'm going to read it into Psychos with a structure as I do with pretty well all my uh, data communications. And um, in my Psychos uh, transmitter for LoRa I've got a VCO that's going to work over uh, a range of minus one to one. So basically I'm going to define here we have the spreading factor. I'm picking a simple spreading factor of 3, just so you can see it, visualize it. So the number of symbols will be 2 to the 3, which will be 8 symbols. And then I'm going to divide my bandwidth up uh, by, uh, I'm going to divide from minus 1 to 1, fs is 2, so let's say from minus 1 to 1 I'm going to divide that up by 8, but then I'm going to increase the granularity by 100. So I'm going to define my my base symbol SB is going to go from minus 1 up to 1 uh, over those intervals. So over 8 um, divided by 8 times 100. The 100 is just to give it more granularity there. And then uh, each successive symbol is going to be shifted by the amount of the interval for the, um, uh, the spreading factor. So to do that I'm going to use a, a function called circular shift and um, I'm going to define um, a matrix capital S and each row is going to be uh, a symbol. So symbol 1 will be the first row up to symbol 8 will be the eighth row. And then I'm going to plot the symbols and I'm going to have a random data sequence which I'm going to read into Psycho. So I'm going to say symbol 1 symbol 3, symbol 8, symbol 7, symbol 4, etc. In uh, Psychos and Psychos Lab, uh, arrays start at 1 and go to n, whereas in MATLAB, for instance, they would start, the index would start at 0 to n minus 1. That's something to keep in mind. So the S0 symbol in Psychos is actually the S1 symbol. So I'm going to read my data in at a rate of 1000 and um, we're going to see that uh, each one of these vectors is, uh, I think it's um, 801 um, uh, units long. 
So let's uh, let's execute this. So what we see over here, this is a graph of the various symbols. So here's symbol zero. It starts at minus one and it goes all the way up to one. Here's the next symbol, symbol one. Now we've divided the interval from minus one to one by eight. Okay, so it's 0.25 in, so it's at 0.75 it starts. So it goes all the way up to one goes down to minus one again and then it goes back to neg 0.75 and then here's a third one the third one is two intervals in remember there's eight intervals so it's 0.25 times 2 or 0.5 so minus 0.5 it goes all the way up to one down again and then back to uh, 0.5 so that's how you construct the um, the symbols let's plot and see what the data looks like so I'm going to say plot data so that's what my data looks like so I start off with symbol one and then I've got symbol I guess it's symbol three etc so it looks kind of jagged what what's unique about these symbols is when you do the receiver and correlate them there's a very strong correlation between one and itself and a strong anti-correlation between itself and another symbol so that's why this is a powerful modulation technique so now let's go into Psychos. So I'm going to start the ModNum toolbox, run Psychos, and then we're going to open the file. So there's my uh, file. There's my VCO. Again, it goes from minus one to one. I've set the VCO up just for simple, simple units. Its uh, center frequency is 100 hertz. The minimum frequency is minus 50 or 50 hertz, and the maximum frequency is plus 50, so 150 hertz. I'm going to read in um, the data from the workspace and we're going to look at what it, what it looks like. So I'm going to run this. So there you see this is what's coming in. There's my symbol one, symbol three, etc. And if I expand this a bit, you can see what's going on here. So this is an up ramp, an up chirp, and you can see that the frequency of the oscillator is increasing. So at the bottom here, this is at 50, 50 cycles per second, and at the top here, it's 150 cycles per second. So that's basically um, how you build. And if you look at the spectrum here, which is interesting, you see the spectrum is flat over the, the bandwidth. So the oscillator, uh, the VCO goes from about 50 to 150, and no surprise here, that's what the spectrum is. So basically what we've done then is we've created the alphabet of symbols to use for LoRa, and we've, um, we've got a transmitter here. So in, in, the next, in the next videos with LoRa, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exercise the actual transceiver, the 900 megahertz transceiver, we're gonna play with it, and maybe we'll try and do a receiver and do the correlation to see how the uh, the LoRa the sp spread spectrum chirp transmission works and how powerful it is. So we'll do that in uh, I guess further videos.